We want to find the percent of observations from the standard normal distribution that are less than 1.21. So first thing we do is we draw our picture. I'm going to put it over here because I wrote this over here. So draw our normal curve. The mean is zero. Standard deviation is one because it tells us we're working with the standard normal. So we have negative one, negative two, negative three, positive one, positive two, and positive three. So this time, we want to find the percent of observations less than 1.2. We would estimate 1.2 to be about there-ish. We want less than, so that's all this down here. So anybody remember the function from yesterday? Alex? Uh, second bars and then number two normal CDF. Thank you, sir. And then lower and upper down, so I can go to the point. And then the mean and the standard deviation. Awesome, thank you. So normal CDF, which like Alex said, you're going to hit second bars. We want number two. Number one is a PDF. We'll get there eventually, but for now we use CDFs. Lower bound, I don't have a lower bound, so I'm going to put in a really small number, like negative 1 e to the 99, which means times 10 to the 99th power. To get that e, you're going to hit second comma. And then my upper bound is where I drew my line, 1.21. Yes, Wait, Hannah? Table A way in the back of the book, it goes to four answer, four, four answers, four decimals. All right, so my lower bound, really small number, upper bound is the 1.21. My mean is zero. My standard deviation is one. Why didn't it put normal CDF in front of it? That was weird. Paste. There we go. All right, so you should have gotten 0.8869 if you round. Everybody get that? If it's a percentage, when you Oh, it's negative. So when I put that in the calculator, that's what I get. The question is asking for a percent, so I would, in theory, multiply by 100, right? So it would be 88.69%. Or would it be 88.6860%? Go to four decimals, then change it to a percent. So the calculator gives that to me but it is asking for the percent. So this one was asking for proportion, so I left it as a decimal. That one's asking for percent, so I would change it to 88.69%. Cool. 
questions. Nate? Yeah, this question was on like a test. Would you want it in word format? Like a sentence? No. Okay. Any other questions before I put my paper? All right, so still working with the same types of problems, um, but notice this time, instead of being um, the proportion or percent less than, this time it says greater than. So we're gonna be shading the right side of our curve instead of the left. So I'm still gonna draw my standard normal distribution. So I have zero, my mean at the center, my standard deviation is one. This time I want to find the proportion greater than negative 1.78. So I'm going to estimate that's around here. Negative 1.78 greater than, sorry, my negative next to my 1 looks like a 7. There we go. Greater than would be everything to the right, so I'm going to shape that. So then when I do normal CDF, this time I do have a lower bound. It's the negative 1.78. And my upper bound is going to be a really big number. So I'm going to do positive 1 e to the 99. So lower bound is the negative 1.78. My upper bound, I'm going to use positive 1, e to the 99, mean 0, standard deviation of 1. <clears throat> so, this one gives me 0 0.9625 <coughs> when I round. And it's asking for proportion, so I'm just going to leave it as a decimal. Any questions so far? I want you guys to try the middle one in this box, please. Oops, I broke my, my box through my pie. Thank you. 
and then your upper bound would have been that, but positive here. So it's a really big number instead of a really small number. So, but when it's negative, is that is that when it's looking for less? less? Or yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other questions before we move on? All right. Quite a few of you actually did the third one, and you did it correct, which is awesome. By the way, what was the answer here? 6.300%. Six just say 6.3. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, on the last one, um, we're going to find the proportion of observation standard normal distribution, but this time we're told it's between two values. We're still working with yesterday's So I'm going to draw my curve. <clears throat> Zero is at the center, and my one, two, and three above, and my negative one, negative two, negative three below. So this time, we're given two numbers between negative 0.58, which I would estimate is somewhere around here-ish, and then positive 1.79, which I would say is around there-ish. So we want to find the proportion between. So we're looking at the shaded area being between those two numbers. So this time the problem gives us our lower bound and our upper bound. We don't have to use that 1e e to the 99. So we're going to do normal CDF. We have negative 0.58 for our lower bound, 1.79 for the upper bound, mean of zero, standard deviation of one. Everybody see the difference on this one? Before it said less than a number, greater than a number, now it's telling us we're between two numbers. So negative 0.58, positive 1.79, mean and standard deviation are the same. So we get 0.6823. And we're looking for proportion, so we're going to leave it as a decimal. Computer stuff. I don't know. Any questions? <laughs> all right, so you also have to be able to go backwards, which is what these problems are down here. So up here, when um, we're working with the standard normal distribution, I'm going to flip back. Um, yesterday I told you really what it is, is we're just looking at z-scores in the standard normal distribution. So when it asks you to find the proportion that are less than 0.81, that's really telling you they want to know the proportion that have a z-score less than 0.81. And that's a really common way to see the same question. Instead of saying less than 0.81, they'll say z is less than 0.81. A standard normal curve is just all your z scores. Anna? Is that like the way it was on the board? Yes. Like you kept doing that one time. Mm-hmm. Like you were touching it. Say it a little louder. Are you going to check the board? I will eventually. Because I think there's a question about it. I need to understand. Yeah. That they will use Z, they'll use words, and then the ones I told you to skip are what we're going to look at right now, the going backwards part. So, like the last one we just did, um, 
sometimes in the book or on the AP exam, instead of using the words, it'll say, let's see, I want a color that'll stand out. Um, it'll tell you to find the proportion of observations in the standard normal distribution with negative 0.58 less than Z, which is less than 1.79. Sorry, my 7 and my 9 ran in. That doesn't even look like 79. We're going to rewrite that. So a standard normal distribution or curve is just a bunch of z-scores. So if you see a z, it's asking you to do these problems. Then when we go backwards, it's going to ask you to find the z-score from the normal distribution that has certain conditions. So I'm going to go through A, B, and C, and then you guys are going to try the other ones, okay? You should draw a picture. Pictures help. So we want to find the value of Z from the standard normal distribution that satisfies the following conditions. The 20th percentile. What is the definition of a percentile? Do we remember? Tyler? Everything below. Everything below, thank you. So this means that we would have 20% less than our z-score we're looking for. My handwriting is too big. So if we have our standard normal distribution, we have zero at the center. Now, it's not going to be perfectly to scale because I don't know where 20% really is, but I'm thinking that it's somewhere in this area. So. The 20th percentile would mean that we have 20% less than it. So this time you're given the area or the proportion under the curve and you have to find the z-score right here. Before I gave you the z-score and you found the proportion or the percent, now we're just doing it backwards. Okay. So 20% we're going to use proportions when we type it in the calculator. So that would just be 0 0.2. Hey, uh, so I, so literally no one I know can help me with this sheet. I've asked several people and no one can even come close to what it's, to how to do this. Okay, I can't help you right now because I'm teaching another class. All right. But maybe next time stay in class so you can hear me teach it. Don't leave, wait. The notes are on Canvas. You can watch my video. Well, it's just... All right, this time... We're going to use the same, um, we're going to go to the same menu, but we're going to use a different function. So we're going to hit second bars. This time we're going to use number three, inverse norm. So it's going to do the inverse of what normal CDF does. So those of you with the older calculators, same thing as yesterday. The newer ones prompt you for the information. The older ones will just paste it into the home screen for you, and then you have to put the information in. So inverse norm asks for the area, and then your mean and your standard deviation. Since we're still working with the standard normal distribution, it's still 0 and 1 for the mean and standard deviation. Like Tyler reminded us, the 20th percentile means we have 20% below, or 0.2. The calculator wants it as a proportion. If you type 20 in there, it won't give you a good answer. 
So we're going to put 0.2 for the area. For those of you with the older calculator, you're going to type in your area, comma, your mean, comma, standard deviation. So just like yesterday, you type things in with commas in between. And then we're going to hit paste. Wait, so yes. Why does the area for the tail, the tail left, center, and right? So the tail is to the left, because we're shading to the left. Some of the newer ones do. Some of, like, this is the same, like, I don't know, model as that one, but some, and the blue one asks for the tail, too. Um, so we get a z-score of negative 0.8416, which makes sense. We're below zero. So we would get z equals negative 0.8416. Questions? Do I need to zoom in? Nick? Oh, yes, thank you. I do need to write the calculator thing on this as well. So this is inverse norm. And we put 0.2, the mean was 0, standard deviation is 1. And then that gave us that z-score. And to get to inverse norm, it's second bars and then number three. Any other questions? Hannah. Um, like for the 20%, are you just, like how are you um, estimating that? Like on the so I used my Two things. One, if you want to wait to put the line in until after you find the answer so that you feel more comfortable. But the way I did it was I used my 68.95.99.7 rule. So I knew that, let's see if I can draw a little picture. I'll put it down here and then I'll erase it. So our 68.95.99.7 rule tells me that 68% of the data is between these two, right? Which means I have 32% on the outsides. Well, because of the symmetry, that means 16% on this side and 16% on that side. So with 20%, because that's the one, the zero, excuse me, negative one, zero and one. So 16% of my data falls below negative one. So with 20%, I said, okay, it's gotta be just a little inside that negative one. That's how I estimated that orange line. Noah? If the tail's in the center, does that mean that the z-score is gonna be in between? Mm -hmm. How many? Besides Noah and Sam, because they're using my calculators, anybody else's calculators ask the tail question? Okay, so you guys kind of get a, a little cheap. So here in a minute, when we do the greater than, I'm gonna show it one way. You guys don't have to do it that way, you just get to choose the tails to the right, okay? And then like he said, center means you're between two sports. Can I erase my picture? All right, 45% of all the observations are greater than Z. So again, I'm working with that standard normal 
So I'm going to draw my picture. drew the dashes all the way up this time. I should have just done hash marks, but that's okay. All right, so this time we want 45% of all the observations greater than C. So besides those of you that have the calculator that asks about the tail, inverse norm only does the less than part of the problem. So when we're told that 45% is greater than, which by the way, I think this one's gonna be between zero and one. 45% being greater would be to the right because we're greater than Z. But like I was saying, inverse norm, if it doesn't ask you which side the tail is on, then you have to subtract it from 100 or one to get the less than side because the other calculators inverse norm only does less than. So if 45% is greater than the Z value we want, what percent is less than? I heard somebody say it, but I didn't know who said it. 55, thank you, Cheyenne. So 45%, if we take that away from 100, we're going to have 55% on this side of our z-score. So those of you with the tail question on your calculator, you're going to use 0.45 for your area. Just tell the calculator your tail is on the right, and you should get the same answer as us. Okay. So those of us without the tail question, we're still going to use inverse norm but we're going to use 0.55 for our area um, to figure out the z-score that has 45% above. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So let's see, inverse norm. We're going to do 0.55 for the area. And then we're going to do 0 and 1. And we get 0.1257 if I round. Are we good on that one? Sam nodded, let me know if he got it. Tyler, did you get that one? You did tail to the right. Any questions? So our z-score here is 0.1257. Anna. Say that last part again. Which one that asks you less, you just fill out like the 20% for the 20% that the site was already doing? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So do we not have to find the percent We did. So a z-score that has 55% of the data less than it is the same as a z-score that has 45% greater than it. Because they 45 and 55 add to 100 and make that area under the curve one. So there's two ways to ask every single question, I guess, if you think about it that way. Any others? All right. Last one that I'm going to do, and then you guys are going to try on the right. 26% of all observations are less than Z. Let's go with purple. I haven't used purple. 
So still have zero at the center, standard deviation of one. Three, one, two, three, 26% are less than. So that's gonna be pretty close to zero, I think. And we're looking at less than. So 26% as the decimal would be 0.26 for our area when we type it in inverse norm. So we get negative 0 0.6433. Any questions so far? You guys are going to do D, E, and F. For me, please. You have to write the graph. You need to draw a graph. If you want full credit on the AP exam, which then he's on my test. So the calculator, the weight and there's not program is to only to be the left side. So the area has to be on the left. So the question tells us 45% or greater than. So then I can say okay, 100% on the curve. 45% is greater than the spot that the question would be less than. Okay, so this is like the left side since it only does that. Yeah. Unless like I said some of the cap newer calculators have to have the tail. In which case you can use whatever number. But the older ones are, are written to only do the left side. If I tried to do that with like the right side, I didn't take a
Wait, just the answers are like the graph to...